The wedging strategy combines certain tactics of anti-procrastination with some of the motivational strategies that have been covered. It can be a very powerful technique. If you're wondering where the term comes from, it comes from chopping wood. And as an experienced wood person will know, they can't chop a large piece of wood in one blow from the axe. They need some help, and they use a wedge to do this. This is where this technique comes from. The log is the task, and the wedge is the strategy that you use to break that task down into small, manageable pieces. Instead of approaching a large task with a massive expenditure of energy, similar to what you might do if you were cramming, instead break it up into pieces using a study wedge. At the thin edge of this wedge is the first five minutes of the task. This is identical to the five minute technique that was covered in the procrastination video. After the first five minutes is up, you have a choice to make. You can either take another five minutes or take a break. But you'll probably find that inertia will carry you for a while. That's the middle part of the wedge. However, that won't be enough. You'll want to push yourself. Just do another five minutes, just another five minutes for the final part of the wedge. You'll probably find that your willpower is needed most for the beginning and the end part of the wedge. If after the first five minutes you want to take a break, that's okay, but then the second rule of wedging kicks in, and that is you have to time the break. Many students will break until they feel like studying again. That could be days later. You don't want that, so you've got to set the time limit. If you're using this strategy, you'll probably be having a kitchen timer. So use the kitchen timer, set it for the amount of time that you want for your break, and when the alarm goes off, your commitment is to come back to the task and again do the first five minutes to start a new study wedge. Use these rules during the entire time that you've set aside to do the studying. What you'll find is that if you use the wedging technique regularly, it's going to have a number of benefits for you. First, you are no longer procrastinating. You've actually got it started, and that's a good thing. Two, you're rewarding yourself by having that break after you've done the studying. And third, your breaks are real breaks. You can actually sit back and relax because the alarm clock is going to tell you when to come back. You don't have to think about studying during your break. Four, you're building up your willpower by delaying stopping the task. This is building your study muscle. Wedging can be a very powerful strategy for students. And notice that you're in charge the whole time. You determine how long your breaks are and how long your study periods are. If you only study for five minutes and then take a 25 minute break, then do again five minutes of studying and a 25 minute break and you did that for three hours, you'd get 30 minutes of studying done. That's 30 more minutes than you would have if you procrastinated for the entire time. And because of the law of inertia, you'll probably find that you'll do much more than 30 minutes of studying. This is the power of the strategy. Here's a quick summary of the three rules of wedging. First, get started on time by doing just the first five minutes of the task. Use a kitchen timer. At the end of the first five minutes, decide whether you want to do another five minutes or take a break. If you want to do another five minutes, great, set the kitchen timer and go do it. If you want to take a break, that's also okay, but you must set a time limit on that break. When the alarm goes off, you have to come back and do just another five minutes of the task. You repeat this as needed for the amount of time that you've set aside to study. I hope this helps.